BNS Ghazi versus INS Vikrant. 1971, the third war between India and Pakistan was looming and the Indian Navy was conducting a threat and capability analysis in preparation for it. A major part of the capability analysis included the decision on how to best use its only aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant. Indian Navy's first aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant, was commissioned in 1961. It was the only aircraft carrier the Indian side possessed at the time and hence was the crown jewel of the Indian Navy. It was expected to play a major role imposing the naval blockade between East and West Pakistan during the war. In early 1970, when it was clear that the war was imminent, INS Vikrant was immobile in Bombay due to serious leaks and cracks in its boilers. These cracks and fissures could not be welded, which meant it would be very difficult for the aircraft carrier to work up sufficient speed to launch its aircraft. Admiral Nanda, the chief of Indian Naval Staff at the time, decided that he wanted to see for himself as to what were the actual capabilities of Vikrant. Trials were carried out in May of 1971 to assess the capability and discuss the role of INS Vikrant in the upcoming war. By the end of June, the sea trials of INS Vikrant were successful. It was concluded INS Vikrant still had the capability to participate in the upcoming war. Despite the success in the trials, INS Vikrant still had its inherent problems, so its speed was restricted to 14 knots as a precautionary measure. With this speed, INS Vikrant could not generate enough wind speed to get its aircrafts airborne. So, at a later time, in a very risky move, all restrictions on Vikrant were removed by its commanding officer. Threat to INS Vikrant A major risk to Vikrant with its current condition was the underwater threat from the enemy submarines. Deploying Vikrant at sea would make it the most worthwhile target for the three Daphne-class submarines in the West. The sophistication of these Daphne-class submarines' detection capability, along with the homing devices of their torpedoes, was such that once Vikrant was picked up and the screen of its escorts pierced, Vikrant would be an easy target for the enemy submarines. The Indian Navy lacked sufficient capability to defend against an attack on INS Vikrant from the sophisticated Daphne-class submarines of the Pakistan Navy. So the professional opinion was overwhelmingly against deploying the Vikrant in her current state. It was a risk not worth taking in the war. Because if Vikrant got torpedoed and sunk by the enemy submarines, it would be a huge loss to the Indian Navy and India's war efforts. The decision on whether or not to send the Vikrant to sea was a difficult one. But Admiral Nanda was determined that Vikrant needed to prove her worth and had to be deployed during the war. Vikrant was to play an important role in the war and its deployment was crucial for the overall war strategy of creating a blockade between East and West Pakistan. So, not deploying INS Vikrant in the upcoming war was not an option. The Indian Navy had to deploy INS Vikrant, but it also needed to take all possible precautions and measures to minimize the risk to it. As previously stated, the most serious threat to Vikrant was from the Daphne-class submarines of the Pakistan Navy. These submarines were the most advanced ones of its time. INS Vikrant or its entourage could not defend against these submarines. The only option here with the Indian Navy was to somehow avoid these submarines altogether. The shortcoming of the Daphne-class submarines was its low range. The endurance capability of the Daphne-class submarines of Pakistan restricted them only to the Western Front. They did not have the capability of traveling all the way from Karachi to the Bay of Bengal near East Pakistan and conduct its operations there. Admiral Nanda decided that the best way to neutralize a threat to Vikrant was to place it beyond the reach of these submarines and deploying it with the Indian Navy's Eastern Fleet. This would successfully protect INS Vikrant from Pakistan Navy's Daphne-class submarines. There was, however, still the threat from the submarine PNS Ghazi, whose endurance capability enabled her to travel all the way from Karachi and operate in the Bay of Bengal. A solution had to be devised to mitigate the risk to Vikrant from Ghazi. Admiral Nanda assigned Vikrant to the Eastern Naval Command along with two gunships of the Brahmaputra class, two ships of the Petya class, and one submarine for its defense. 
To further mitigate the threat to Vikrant from Ghazi, the Indian planners employed deception measures to distract Ghazi away from Vikrant. The core focus of the Indian Navy was to find ways to protect Vikrant and at the same time maximize its usefulness in the upcoming war. Signals Intelligence Radio Interception During the preparation to the war, Lieutenant General J.F.R. Jacob, the Chief of Staff of the Eastern Command, insisted on the Eastern Command having its own Signal Intercept Unit. It was fortunate that he was able to ensure this happened because the unit was not only able to intercept Pakistan's communication between West and Eastern wings, but it was also able to break the Pakistan Naval Code. The focus of the Eastern Fleet Commander of the Indian Navy was to use deception techniques to protect INS Vikrant from an enemy attack, most likely from PNS Ghazi. An old destroyer, INS Rajput, that was located at Vishakhapatnam, was instructed to use INS Vikrant's call sign 20 on a low grade cipher to keep requesting for large quantities of logistics as would be required by Vikrant. The signals initiated by INS Rajput using Vikrant's call sign demanded rations, fuel, oils, lubricants, equipments, clothing, and stores, which in quantity and type indicated that these requirements were for an aircraft carrier at Vishakhapatnam. A low-grade cipher was used so it could be easily broken by the enemy intelligence and with information on the channel convinced them that INS Vikrant was in fact at Vishakhapatnam while it was located elsewhere at an undisclosed location. Once PNS Ghazi, the primary threat to Vikrant is neutralized, then INS Vikrant could be deployed to impose the blockade on the Eastern Naval Front in the Bay of Bengal. Lieutenant General Jacobs' signal intelligence unit intercepted communication from Pakistan that according to their intelligence, INS Vikrant was in Vishakhapatnam. This was the confirmation that the Indian side needed. The deception plans had worked. The subterfuges led the Pakistan Navy to believe that Vikrant was harboring at Vishakhapatnam and the Pakistan submarine PNS Ghazi was tasked to destroy it. November 14, 1971, PNS Ghazi moved on its mission in the east to destroy INS Vikrant. The mission for PNS Ghazi was a highly risky one right from the beginning. Starting from West Pakistan, traveling all across the Indian Peninsula, then reaching on the east side in the Bay of Bengal, getting close to Vishakhapatnam port, locating INS Vikrant and executing its attack. All this while avoiding detection from the Indian side and after the attack is executed, swiftly moving out of the Indian attacking perimeter into their safety zone. Had Ghazi been able to sink or even damage the aircraft carrier, the shock effect alone would have been sufficient to upset Indian naval plans and the overall Indian war strategy. The naval situation in Bay of Bengal would have undergone a drastic transformation in favor of Pakistan. The aircraft carrier supported military operations in the coastal areas would have been greatly affected, providing the much needed respite to the Pakistan side. So tempting were the prospects of a possible success that the mission was approved despite several factors which went against it. The Pakistan Navy ordered all its submarines to slip out of harbor quietly on various dates between November 14th and November 24th of 1971. PNS Ghazi that started from Karachi on November 14, 1971 was at Madras on November 27th and reached Vishakhapatnam on the night of December 3rd, 1971. The Pakistan Navy directed the Ghazi to occupy Zone Victor, presumably the code name for Vishakhapatnam. The deception measures by the Eastern Naval Command succeeded in convincing Pakistan side that INS Vikrant was in Vishakhapatnam Harbour when in fact it was elsewhere. December 3rd, 1971, 5.40 p.m. Indian Standard Time. The Pakistan Air Force attacked multiple Indian airfields in the north. Open hostilities had begun between India and Pakistan for the third time in three decades. INS Rajput, which was masquerading as INS Vikrant at Vishakhapatnam, also joined the fleet for operations. Rajput was ordered to leave harbor with the caution that PNS Ghazi would be in the vicinity and all precautions should be taken. 
Rajput sailed just before midnight on December 3rd and while proceeding along a narrow channel about half a mile ahead saw a disturbance in the water. Presuming that this could be the enemy submarine PNS Ghazi diving, the captain of INS Rajput ordered depth charges to be fired. It then proceeded on its course. A depth charge is an explosive charge designed to be dropped from a ship or aircraft and to explode underwater at a preset depth. This is generally used for attacking submarines. 12.15 a.m. December 4th, 1971, people all over India were waiting to hear the Prime Minister's broadcast to the nation. This is when a loud explosion was heard in Vishakhapatnam Harbour. Many heard the explosion and came out of their houses thinking it was an earthquake. Some of those who looked out saw a big plume of water high into the sky at a distance from them. It was muffled, yet powerful deep underwater explosion. The morning of 4th, the Indian Navy personnel went out to the spot and located the wreck. The clearance diving team found in the shallow water near Vishakhapatnam the wreckage of PNS Ghazi. PNS Ghazi had sunk within the first few hours of beginning of hostilities between India and Pakistan. What sank PNS Ghazi? There are many theories on what sank PNS Ghazi. First one, it was destroyed by INS Rajput. The first possibility was that PNS Ghazi was sunk by INS Rajput. Since the explosion of Ghazi was heard only a few minutes after Rajput fired depth charges targeting Ghazi. Another possibility was that Ghazi blew up on its own mines. PNS Ghazi laid mines along the narrow channel near the harbor. There is a possibility that it drifted back on the mines it was laying, which blew it up. A third theory was that there was excess accumulation of hydrogen gas, which ignited and exploded the submarine. Several officers who were involved in the investigation of the wreck of Ghazi agree with the last theory that the explosion was caused due to accumulation of hydrogen. Signals sent by Ghazi recovered from its message logbook state very explicitly that the submarine had a major problem of hydrogen buildup inside. Perhaps when the buildup of hydrogen exceeded safety limits, the explosion took place which also blew up all the ordnance Ghazi was carrying. With the destruction of PNS Ghazi, the biggest threat to INS Vikrant was neutralized. INS Vikrant was now able to carry out operations in the Bay of Bengal without any major threats from the enemy.